everything ready here. Let's see if anybody is dropping in to be live. Recording going. Recording is going. Cool. Can you that there? Hello, folks who are in the chat already. Welcome, welcome. You're early. Coffee cold enough to sip from yet? Mm, it smells so good. How's everybody doing this evening? Drop some uh, flower emojis in the chat if you're having a good evening. Mm, it's a lot, it's a lot. Oof. Okay. Hey, everybody. Oh, cool. I think Alejandra has just joined. Let me send her. Invite. Went ahead and sent that. Ricardo, thank you for your flowers. Glad you're having a good evening. Hello. Hello. Let me get my music volume down. Sorry. Okay. There. How are you doing? Hello. 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 Hi. Just adjust this. Take your time. I have mine on like a, a rubber band system right now. <laughs> okay. There. It's because the for some reason the audio went down as soon as I joined. That's why I was trying to turn up the volume. Oh, weird. Yes. No worries. We have plenty of time for troubleshooting. I think these things can go as long as like an hour or something. I love the little image. It's so cute. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm trying, to do something, I'm trying to do something for everybody. Every, every, yeah. every artist. Uh, I actually wanted to ask about that, if you don't <laughs> mind, uh, while sure. I get this thing set up. Um, yeah, your username is uh, 44 Water Lilies. I'm just curious, like, what's the, is that, like, your favorite flower or something? Uh, well, not necessarily. It kind of started about two years ago, where in one of my artworks, I kind of featured some of the lily pads and the water lily. And I just had some sort of, like, I guess you could say, like, an obsession or some sort of fixation mm -hmm. with the lily pad more so than the flower. Mm -hmm. And previously on Instagram, I had my name, like, Ale Martinez. And then just I just decided to change it. And the 44 is just like a lucky number that I always have with me. So 44 what is. <laughs> oh, cool. Is that yeah. like, uh, uh, it's like a numerology thing, right? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, I featured that... it a lot in my work too. I'm sorry? I featured it a lot in my work. That's why um, I decided to put it in the, in the username. But yeah, it has a lot to do with that. Very cool, that's interesting. I don't know a whole lot about numerology uh, personally. I, I know folks who are interested in it, uh, and I know that there's like things called angel numbers and stuff like that. I assume that means there might be devil numbers as well. I don't know if you are privy to that information. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. We can leave them out of this yeah. conversation entirely. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your work. Like, how'd you get started? Uh, to be honest, I wasn't uh, familiar with your work prior to the festival. I think uh, uh, Ramiro or Josue brought you into the installation. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. Well, coming into um, kind of, I, I guess I could, I always describe it into the local art team. Uh, it wasn't really that much long ago, about a year ago that I started getting, you know, um, I guess noticed and more people following my work. But I've been doing this for quite a while now. Um, I, I like to say that I formally started uh, with my work when I started publishing it on Instagram and I started with collage. So everything handmade, paper collages. Um, my background prior to making collage was that I liked doing comics uh, during school. And uh, this was around the time that I had joined the university. So I was a student going into UTRGV and I just really liked doing collage. So it was something that I got introduced to in school. And I really liked the fact that they had fashion magazines and I just kind of became really obsessed with them too, the Vogue magazines, and that's what I would work with. And I would post about, let's say like once a week, and I was real consistent with it. But I, within my time of the school, I was kind of hesitant to, I guess, or maybe not hesitant is not the word, but I didn't really know how to immerse myself with other artists other than my like peers and such. Um, like I said, kind of, starting with events and starting to getting to know other people within the scene outside from school when mm -hmm. the pandemic started kind of uh, oh, that's wow. when i started yeah 
around that. But I've been doing collage for like three years now. And then it kind of shifted. Uh, once I started taking different classes, my artwork shifted into doing now like drawings and oil paintings and now kind of working now with printmaking. Uh, but I kind of had that as a, I guess like a, some sort of, how can I say? Like my background coming into my recent artwork is collage. Gotcha. And uh, we have so much we could touch on, but uh, you had mentioned something in the beginning that kind of made my ears flutter a little bit. You were into comics, like drawing comics when you were yeah, in school? Yeah, like I would, yeah, like the thing is, is that ever since I was like in middle school, I really liked uh, basically not necessarily like, like the Marvel comics or DC, but I liked making like my own little stories of like me and my sister. And I They're liked like the illustration. Uh huh. Like yes, like those comic strips. I really liked the the way I could animate faces or like not necessarily animation, but just how to create like different characters, which basically me or like other things. But I really liked that. And it's something that I haven't really gone back to. I kind of left that <laughs> in the past, but yeah. Right on. I mean, everybody gets started somewhere. I used to do yeah. comics way back in the day. Uh, and then they got taken away and I kind of got really sad and I don't think I picked it up again. Uh, my teacher kind of like, I, I would do like one page of notes uh, and then another page would be like, a, you know, something like part of a story or whatever. I was really into like anime, so it'd be like a manga. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's, it's, a, it's a great way to like kind of like get your ideas started and also just like play around with stuff that I assume you kind of already were like familiar with. Like you kind of had read other comics or whatever, and so you kind of understood maybe like how to, how to tell a story, or maybe learned a little bit more about that. Um, I was gonna say. So um, you'd said that you had had a hard time kind of like getting into the community or whatever. Was that because um, you just didn't know anybody, or like you know maybe you, like you tried to to reach out, or what? What was the story then? I think the problem was, or maybe an issue for me was that when I was in the first years of my university with the art courses, I was very much isolated from even the peers. There was a lot of times where I kind of, whenever I did my collages, I was very much alone. I didn't really like engaging with other people. And I guess maybe just from, it stemmed from like social anxiety. So I was kind of hesitant to connect with other people. But even within, when I started engaging with, uh, with the classmates and such, I knew how to do the work and the assignments, but I didn't know how to connect from outside, like the classroom. Like I knew that there was events, I had heard about the, it was like the art walk in McAllen, and I knew that there was different things and outlets, but I didn't ever know how to access them. Like I, I wasn't sure like how, how do I contact or who do, who do I call? Like sure. it was just very much like, I don't know, like I just know that that happens, but I don't know how to immerse myself into that. And I feel like, now with the pandemic and everything kind of being online, everything to me seems more accessible because people are seeing your work and it's like, hey, you know, and one of the factors that I kind of include into that is a lot of these people are from McAllen, from Mission areas, and I live in Palmview. So there's not really much opportunities in terms of art. It's more like in terms of like the community, it's more like sports or just dance and music. So right. it's like, um, that's yeah. I now that I think about it, I don't know a whole lot of people from Palm View. You might be the first person that I've met who's specifically from Palm View. I always get confused because there's Palm View and then Palmhurst, right? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Palmhurst is like towards the north side, but yeah. Okay, Palm View's on the south side. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Like yeah. Palm View, it's Palmhurst is a city of itself, but it's very small. It's like through mile three over here, but Palm View is just I guess south of Palmhurst, but right. in within Mission, it's west of Mission. So it's, it's a oh, very so. small area. Uh -huh. It's a very small area here. So it's like, I mean, it's like a developing city. That's why I'm like, well, most of the opportunities are in McAllen and in Edinburgh and Harlingen and all of that. The bigger cities or whatever. Yeah. Um, so just to clarify, because I, I think I might be getting confused. Is, uh, are, is Palm View uh, within Mission or is it like its own city? It's its own city. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what I was confused about. I've always wondered because like, People always refer to like Mission, Sherryland, and like, yeah, Palm View and Palm Forest. I kind of don't have a geographic like understanding of, of the area or whatever. Like, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, so I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Um, that is totally a thing though of like, um, you know, uh, concentrations of like artists, like folks from all over the valley will probably either move to like McAllen or Brownsville too. I think Brownsville yeah. is like a bigger city probably yes. uh, uh, than McAllen. Um, so there tends to be like, you know, I guess like opportunities, like you said, or events and things like that. 
Um, that's actually something that we uh, thought about with the festival, about how like most of us involved in it are from the McAllen area, I think, and Natalia is originally from Brownsville. So one out of four, but um, you know, like we wanted to include people from all over the valley too, like not just Upper Valley, you know, Mid Valley as well. Um, and so, I mean, it's great to have you on the lineup for that reason. Um, so tell me a little bit about like your collages, because you have a very uh, uh, distinct style to them. It kind of, uh, it, you have a style throughout most of your work, but uh, you could do collages too. Yeah, so I think the style, I, I wouldn't know what words to describe it, but I, even when I made them, I knew that there was kind of this expected style or very repetitive. Um, I guess you could even say very figurative because I always went towards the models that were, and I like kind of this deconstructing them. So if they looked away, I like kind of combining. And I think the reason why I chose to, to kind of choose that style was because I was playing around with some sort of ideas of creating something new out of the things that I had. Right. And then what started too was that I would seek out and purchase the the Vogue magazines strictly. Oh, like it became yeah, it became a, like a thing. Because I mm. had I would thrift books to find like special like backgrounds or things relating to food or like models. Cool but then it just uh -huh. and then it just became like a strict fashion thing because I immersed myself in fashion. Like not anymore like I used to, but I remember I used to watch like the the wrong ways. I wouldn't miss anything. I knew what was going on and, and this and that. So it just wow. became, it, it was like, okay, so I want to know uh, if I can, you know, keep up to date. And I kind of, I still have my collection there. I have like, I don't know how many like Vogue magazines, but I would reach, the, um, I wouldn't buy them here in the United States because a Vogue magazine is uh -huh. $10, $12. And oh, to me, that would be like a lot of money to keep on sure. buying. So what I would do is because I would recent, or I had like a time that I would go to Reynosa all the time like once a month, I would buy them from over there, the Vogue Mexico. And then I, it became, I became like a little <laughs> collage connoisseur because I was like, no, because <laughs> the Vogue magazines from Mexico, the Mexico ones, sure. they're only, uh, well, I guess if you translate it to uh, US dollars, it's like three like or four pesos? dollars. Uh -huh. It was like, what was it? So like 200 pesos, which is, okay. no, 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 200. It was 20, yes, because it's three, two dollars. Oh, like two or three bucks, something like that? Uh -huh. It was like two dollars, so it was way cheaper. Uh -huh. And the thing that I said that I become obsessed with those more than the American ones was because they had more ads than the ones oh. here. The ones here had like way too many columns of like writing, which served me for nothing because I wanted images. Of course, and the ones over there left words, right? Yeah. <laughs> I need the, the magazines, the, uh -huh. I mean, the illustrations or the images. So then I started just buying strictly the Vogue Mexico and it kind of became like also like a collection of mine to have like the sure. one from every month and such. And I would, um, I would be following like, okay, what is the, the things that, for example, that Balenciaga is, is um, right now. And I don't know if it was, actually, I think it was Versace, the one that had like a, like a little metal can bag. Right, it was like a little thing that was very particular to that collection. Right, it was like a like a soda know. can. No, okay. I, it was like a soda can, and it was like the dazzle. So since that was that was what was in style or whatever, I always tried yeah. to think, okay, how can I play around with the image that is there, and kind of introduce something that is more personal to me. Right, like for that example, I'm thinking of like some of my collages so that I can give you an example of them. But th that I would do that I would play around with like the words of the <laughs> of the of the brands and I would kind of personalize it in a way like I would in a way like remix the the image to kind of fit what I was trying to say I, sure, it sounds sure. very vague but like I no, could no, explain I mean, if I had it there I, if, if I may like what I'm understanding is uh just because I mean my you know uh advertisements are usually like very meticulously designed they have yes. like very like straight up like color palettes and, and everything is really just, you know, ads aren't messy. They're all very yes. clean. And so like you can, uh, do you cut or scan your stuff? Do you keep your magazines intact or do you chop them out and then they're in a piece? I, well, to some of them, I used to just cut them. And uh -huh. then whenever, because like I said, it became like a hobby, but then I started actually getting into fashion. There were times when I really liked the collection that I would just buy two of them. So keep one and then cut the other one. <laughs> yeah. It became very much that because one of the houses that I got really obsessed with 
was with Gucci, with the new director, with the creative director. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved his things. It was just like, I was obsessed with what he was putting down the runway. Like I, I felt like I could also work with that. And in a way, like I've disclosed this to some of my friends. It's such a weird thing. But back then when I was working, um, he actually noticed my stuff. He never reached out to me. He never reached directly through like he liked, he liked it or he what? He followed my page for a while, like the credit director. And I was like, oh, but this is my way. <laughs> <laughs> and I would see that he would like see my stories and stuff. I was like, uh -huh. este algo quiere. But no, <laughs> unfortunately, like, wow. <laughs> like it was like, I want to say like two months that I was like, <gasps> like he's looking at my stuff, but like very sure. like behind the scenes. So I was, well, I mean, I would, I, I'm still very much uh, available if, you know, for some reason life <laughs> Mr. happens. Uh, I am still... No, Gucci, Mr. Gucci. No, Gucci, it's uh, Ale Gucci, Alessandro Michele. Yeah, if for name? some reason, his name is Alessandro Michele. Alessandro if Michele? for some reason he gets on this life. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. No, I mean, I'm still very much willing to work because the thing was that at that time, something that really inspired me was that that house Gucci was featuring artists so oh, they okay. had artists like Coco Capitan they had another artist unskilled work I think was her name um what was this? there was another they, they one that I still follow they were that's why I think he started wow. following my work they were looking for people and then the work the artwork was featured in the clothing and I would look wow. also yeah I was like Imagine. so I was thinking oh my god but you know and it was a part of my of my um inspiration to kind of be like those artists where they get featured and they get invited to all these events and such and it wasn't even so much that it was just that i i would want to work with something like that uh but then you know i think that era of, of my work was like two three i guess years it was short-lived because i kind of started getting more into my art courses so whenever i was in collage i didn't take art courses in the university it was more um like my what's it the main Based courses i guess uh -huh. And then when I started actually taking art courses, I kind of left collage and it's just like a, a short lived a little memory. I kind of yeah. want to go back, but like I'm not even up to date with fashion anymore. Like it's, it, you kind of have to like keep on. Does it uh, have to be fashion collage? You can't, you can't go out of that, that realm? I mean, I guess I, I could, it was just the thing that I was uh, very obsessed with, but I mean, I guess I could do something different in the future, but. I don't know. Mm. It's because also the thing about making those paper collages, it was very much like a ritual, you know, I, like I had to, I remember at that point, I didn't really have like a desk. So this is something that I remember. It was very, what's that word? Like I did so chronic or I forgot the word, very, like very strange because oh, I didn't okay. have a table, but I had where I would make my collages was in an iron board. Like that was my table. Because uh -huh. it was long enough for me to put the magazines, my paper, oh, my little sure. cutter board. And I was like, you know what? Like, this is just a whole setup. Yeah, and you have the plants on the corner, just like all the way over there. Yes. And so, it, and it was very much okay. And it, it takes its time because I know some people might say, oh, well, collage is that easy. You just cut and paste. But for me, it was a very meticulous, um, I guess, technique. Like, I would look through the magazines. I would see what fit. And it was very much like how people do it in the computer where they have to analyze. But the thing is, you only have one shot in real life, right? Mm -hmm. If you mess up, if you cut something wrong, need more. Right. So. You can't, uh, they haven't figured out a way to, to unglue stuff yet. That's incredible. Uh, well, so you said you, you lost interest in fashion. Um, where did it, how did you get into your illustrations? I'm actually very curious about those. I imagine that has some origins in your comic book days. Uh, you have a very, again, you have a certain style and also just like the way you kind of juxtapose things. Like for a while you were doing uh, the tarot cards, which I thought was really cool, right? Uh, yeah, kind of, a little. How, how did you get into like drawing side of things? So actually this is uh, the kind of the turning point from collage to illustration. Uh, when I started getting a sketchbook, so I still remember December 2020, I got my like first little sketchbook. Like I always got sketchbooks for class that they would tell us like, this is where you're gonna turn in your homework and all of that. But I never actually had a personal sketchbook that I took with me everywhere and such. And it wasn't until that point, that fall semester where I decided, you know what, like in order to improve my drawing, I want to have this with me. And it's something that kind of gonna make like a little 
like interruption of myself. But I mean, for anyone watching that is an artist or just like a young artist, this is something that is crucial. And I, no. I, can't, I cannot uh, stress it enough. Have a sketchbook with you at all times. If you have like a bag or you can fit it like in your pocket or something, have it with you because it will help you. And the thing with, the, with a sketchbook is it's kind of like uh, an artist's diary where you don't necessarily have to do incredible work or you have to like show off when you're doing sketch because i've seen people that do like the sketchbooks and they just try to make everything look perfect i the way that i saw it for me was it's just kind of like a jumping board for illustration i was very much a way for me to practice my ideas but then what would happen is that within the sketchbooks i would just create sometimes a full-on uh drawing Wow. But it was when I started doing that that I, and I still have them, the, I think it's this one, like one of the first ones that I had, it was like just a small sketchbook. Now I kind of just created like, I guess like a version of mine that I always keep a red sketchbook with me. That was just very much that I like to personalize my, my stuff, sure. but any sketchbook really, but this one, what I really liked was that it was small enough to fit in my bag but it was still large enough for me to do um, full on drawings. And I would just start first, it was just me drawing things that I could see like landscapes or um, just the areas in the school. And then it turned on to more like, turned over to like actually playing around with the ideas that I was uh, working with at school. So it was very much more personal. It wasn't so much like drawing from life, but within like what I was thinking about. Do you um, take your assignments and kind of like expand on them a little bit or like kind of go off on your own? Yes. Well, in a way, I would kind of, it, it's very different from working from life because when you're working from life, you just kind of take everything in and try to make it as, as accurate as possible. But when I was playing around with my ideas, it's more like a brainstorming process. So it's not necessarily like a full on drawing, you just kind of have text here, or you have this idea that juxtaposes or that they look together. And mm -hmm. I just, I got obsessed with that. That was like, I consider that like my new way of working. And I always kind of say that it has to do a lot with my, I guess my informal training in collage, where I try to look for things that are very similar. Um, that it was because in collage, the, one of the big factors was the composition. How would everything look within the, the frame of work or the frame of reference that I was going with? Right. And now it's with illustration. Okay, what things are kind of similar? You know, in terms of just the composition, but also maybe the the double meaning that a, an object or a symbol might have. And that's what I just kind of went. I kind of left collage and it's like, okay, I'm just going to go with this now. You're taking these ideas and moving them over here. Yes. Uh, it, I just kind of thought of it as like a training for me. And, and it really helped me now with my newer work. Even if both uh, body of works are completely different, I think the techniques are very much still there of working with similar compositions or similar forms. Most definitely. Uh, for those just joining the chat, speaking here with Alejandra Martinez from Palmview, Texas. Going uh, to be showing artwork at Mira Media Fest this Saturday in the uh, installation portion, which is a virtual installation now, uh, which is super cool. Uh, do you want to tell me a little bit about the pieces that you submitted to the installation? Yes. Uh, so I submitted a lot of <laughs> pieces. <laughs> so I, I kind of went overboard with it because I was like, well, you know, I want to kind of submit some of my oil paintings, but I was like, but it only makes sense now to kind of put out, even when I was going to be in person, just kind of like this timeline of my work. So my work within the exposition are oil paintings and illustrations, ink illustrations, which is something that I kind of got more into uh, full on now. Because um, mm -hmm. I started doing the oil painting, some of the ones that are featured in the in the festival, there's two there that I did in the fall 2019, which were like kind of my beginnings with that type of size of painting. I kind of wanted to start doing bigger sizes that I was accustomed to because during your school days, like in painting, they usually tell you like, a, what is it, like 18 by 24 inches. It's kind of like a small oh, yeah. painting. And in one of my like advanced classes, they kind of told us, you know, size is whatever you guys want. It could be as small as big, whatever, as long as you turn in something with like an artist thing, right? That's when they're, mm -hmm. uh, for anyone who's also watching, like in university, they ask us to do an artist statement, which is basically like what you're trying to say as an artist, uh, what is your message, your meaning, your purpose, most definitely. And I, 
I was uh, very obsessed with philosophy at that point too in in my university courses. I kind of started, I guess, researching and kind of reading about existentialism. And I guess, you know, at, at most points, I think artists do kind of dabble into that and they start questioning, what is my purpose within this? Uh, what should, you know, what should I think about my, my presence in this? You know, you kind of start, sure. you know, I naturally- What is this every... flesh prison? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah, you know, naturally, as one does. And yeah. I wanted to kind of take, uh, in a way, put my own take on that within my oil paintings and um, kind of feature my own imagery. And I started basing it off a lot of uh, absurdism. And I, I got real obsessed with, you know, Albert Camus and like all of that. Um, what is it? Um, I forgot his name. Mm, the other one, he's not a part you of it, Camus? Yeah, Albert Camus, he was, well, he was a writer, but he was, a, I guess, considered a philosopher, but uh -huh. I forgot the other one that they would always fight, but I mean, I guess he's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, was he also, like, very sad all the time? Uh, Kafka? No. Um, well, okay, Kafka, as a writer, I was inspired by him, too, and I'll get to that later with the whole Beatle imagery, but... Sure, no, yeah. That, uh, what was it? I forgot. Well, it's, it's not that important, but I got obsessed with more so his book, and it was a time when I was very lonely. I didn't really have much friends. So it just kind of like, I guess, reiterated more like, you know what, like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Such one, two of those, I kind of, within that same series, I wanted to give like an optimism to the work and say, you know what, even though I was having a hard time kind of finding myself within everything, I still want to be optimistic because there was a lot of times within my work and, and there's strong themes there that there was also like the ideation of suicide and such, which mm -hmm. I, I don't take lightly now, but I remember back then it was something that I didn't really understand why I had those thoughts or why those things happen and such. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember that I, I kind of wanted to give kind of an optimistic take towards that novel because even when I was reading it, yes, I, I liked it and such, but I feel like, it was his perspective, right? It was his novel. And I kind of wanted to, I guess, put my perspective on it about how I read absurdism. Uh, those are two of the paintings. And then the other ones are actually part of the um, a project. I was given a grant within the university. I applied for a, the Engaged Scholar. And it was basically like a Creative Works grant where I had like, I don't know, if, I think it was the $1,000 or $2,000, i am not too sure. Awesome. Uh, to create, I had to create like a, a body of work to which I am extremely grateful that I was given the award and I was able to work with my mentor, which I love her to death. She's so kind. Jasmine, Give her a shout out. Yes, Jasmine Maldonado. She's actually going to have her, she's going to have like a little show. I'll put it in the little chat later. Awesome. But um, yes. I am in depth forever with her because she was so kind to me. And within that project, we worked on creating two of one of the paintings are two of some of the paintings that are within the series that I submitted for the festival. And again, within those, it was more about kind of analyzing the way that I worked with writing, which is also another way that I um, kind of worked differently from my beginnings with collage and with drawing that were, it was just very much creating um, just as I went. But then I got interested in writing poetry and I never like to say poetry because I, I I don't know if I would consider myself a poet. It was very much more like essays, I would say, more formally. But they have some sort of ring to them where they have they're not necessarily formally essays, but kind of poems. And prose, maybe. Yeah, maybe I guess you could say that. Um, and I started kind of wanting to take like um like um I guess what is it analyzing like meta painting like why am I painting about this. What does it mean to paint? And then just kind of write about that. And those paintings have, uh, they feature and they are self-referencing. And you'll notice that because in my work, I include the easel a lot. So it's kind of like, you're looking at a painting. Cause I, I would, I mean, I guess most artists get inspired by surrealism. It's a very cliche thing, but I got real inspired by René Magritte because he would do that. He would write and he would have these really strange images where they were self-referencing. And I, I love that because it's kind of breaking like the fourth wall with the audience too. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you can talk about painting, but what does it actually mean to have a painting within a painting? So it was just very much that. Um, and 
I will say like I am extremely grateful for that um for the grant and for the opportunity but it was very difficult because I was awarded this uh when the pandemic was full on there was no classes I had right. to go to the studio just me and her which is there um and I didn't get the opportunity to to post it or no I exhibited virtually but I didn't actually had oh. the way to put it like in person because the gallery space had a lot to do with what I was trying to say within the really? paintings oh, wow. uh, because of how I was going to set it up and such. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, it's fine. Like, uh, it was very stressful though, because it took a lot for me to get the materials and there was a lot of little things here and there, but I was able to complete it, which is good. And then one of the final paintings is one that I actually created this month. And that's kind of featuring more now my new way of working. So I have like little, I guess, stages development and now i'm kind of trying to play around with a, a more lighter colorful palette because before it was very dark uh very strange too like very surrealist and I, I still am trying to play around with that but now it's more of a playful um kind of uh, intention so i'm still playing around with symbols and i'm still trying to play around with um the, the previous kind of I guess like a vocabulary that I created within my work, but now it's the, the intention is more about myself. So I'm kind of putting myself more in the forefront because back then it was just simple, simple, simple. like, this is what this means. I'm playing around. Uh -huh. Now I want to include myself more in my work. Now that I feel confident, I'm kind of talking about um, myself and how I relate to my own work, right? That's actually and some I'm of the that. illustrations, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. No, okay. Some of the illustrations are just reference to that new thing too, because I forgot I did drawings too. Uh, based off of that, you know, including more of, of a colorful palette. Mm -hmm. No, thank you for that. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Real quick, no, it's okay. Getting, I'm sorry. We're getting several uh, compliments on your makeup. Just ah, thank you. <laughs> heads up on that one. Um, My little... Yeah, actually, before I go to the next question, you uh, I, you've uploaded several photos in clown makeup. Is that also kind of a, a thing, like a, a part of your sort of like your your I don't know artist persona or what? What is that all about? Okay, so that's uh -huh, that's like the the newer way that I'm trying to express my art. So yes, that's okay. part of the newer, uh, kind of the recent work. And that doesn't really have that much. I would say maybe have not even like maybe two or three months. So the reason why I started to express myself more with makeup and kind of reclaim this kind of clown identity too was because I, again, I wanted to include myself in my work. And I, I always say that my work and I used to say that I love talking about my work and I could go on and this and that. But the truth is, is that my previous work was very tragic and it was very dark and it, it was mm -hmm. very much like some heavy topics that, um, you know, are not necessarily very easy to talk to about everyone because, you know, the images are there, but the conversation revolving the, the work itself Difficult. is a very heavy topic, right? Yeah. And I am slowly trying to heal from that type of personality too, where I was very, very like that too. And I always had this joke with my friend where it's like, it's so funny, like how I am personality wise with her and everyone else. Like I'm, I'm real like, I don't know how to explain it, but other than we were just, hey, it's and like this and that, like <laughs> you're not like your work, like now, right? Yeah. I started kind of having more confidence with myself and I started, you know, accepting myself for, for who I was, you know, back then I, I was very shy to myself, very uh, mm. hesitant to talk to other people. But now it's like, okay, you know, I am right now I'm in a better place. I feel more optimistic for things. I think that I'm open to, you know, different things. And the makeup was just a natural, I guess, the, how do you say, like it was just derived naturally from, from thinking of that. Um, sure. Like I, I had done little illustrations here and there uh, featuring like little clown things. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, there's a symbolic uh, essence to that too, you know, uh, the makeup itself just kind of transforms you into this person that, you know, it's not necessarily you, it's some sort of identity where you're kind of like this character and you can uh, do things uh, it, very much, uh -huh, thank you, like very performance. And I guess it's just an elevated version of how I would see myself and my, how I'm building up my confidence in terms of personality and identity. But I I have barely started to kind of feature it in my work uh, little by little because again it's a very contrasted theme from my previous so I'm just kind of slowly figuring out where I kind of want to 
continue with my work, which like, I mean, that's current. Most definitely. Clown emojis in the chat, if you please. <laughs> Thank you very much. We got yes, one I already. haven't really seen the chat. Um, see. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned earlier that there's also like a connotation to the clown, you know, the payaso has a, uh, there's, there's, people already have a sort of predetermined view of that. And you mentioned you're trying to kind of flip that or turn that around. Can you talk about that? Yes. Um, in terms of the makeup or what do you mean? Oh, um, so, uh, you know, uh, your, your decision to, to, I guess, um, uh, derive your makeup uh, similar to that of a clown, you know, uh -huh. the traditional, like the, the clown makeup, uh, is it tied to, uh, is it purely just more about, you know, you're being more outgoing and more confident? Because clowns also are considered silly, but I don't know if you're necessarily True. going for silly, right? I, I get you. Is like is that any part of it? If not, we can move on. I mean, in a in a way, kind of. I guess it's more of a I the way that I interpret it, it's more of a lighthearted performance. Okay. And like I said, it's not necessarily like um, like your traditional like rodeo clown like stuff like that. Right. I mean that in itself, and I respect it for what it is. That has its own you know its own world of how that works mm -hmm. and those people that perform. That is a separate entity from what I'm trying to do. For me, it's more about like a caricature of myself, I guess you gotcha. can say. Uh -huh. And it's not necessarily like I want to become a clown, like full on, you know, even though I joke <laughs> around that. And honestly, this whole started too, because once, uh, it was I think during Halloween where I did the whole thing, like that makes sense. costume and everything. And I went to school like that and then people were like, hey, I love it so much and this, and it just felt natural. Like, I, I don't know, I just liked it very much. And it, I put wow. it aside. It was very much like, okay, that's it. Ah. But now it's just kind of like, hmm, like I'm thinking about it. And it's like, it just makes sense for me now. Uh, the way that I'm kind of navigating uh, my artwork and you know, the opportunities that I've had to, to kind of be present in that, you know, like the, <laughs> the whole year. No, yeah, of course. And like, there's, uh, you know, this isn't meant as a slight to other artists, but there's also an added element of, uh, like we mentioned earlier, like performance to wearing makeup with intention like that. Uh, yes. Well, I imagine most people who wear makeup wear it with intention, but like yeah. uh, uh, your intention uh, as like an artist or like as it connecting to your work. Like I remember uh, when I went to Ramiro's show, the, the Orange Valley Art Show, mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks back, you were showing stuff, I think, mm -hmm. and you had the, the makeup on. Yeah. Is it yes. kind of like, all right, my work is here. I'm here as an artist. I'm here yes. as, you know, Alejandra the clown or just Alejandra, you know, but with the, the makeup on. Like it's, yeah. it's intentional for that, right? Yes. So uh, I don't really see that a whole lot down here. Uh, like performance and performance art usually, to my understanding, kind of get separated. People usually don't blend those things. Um, and it's not really a conscious decision on your end to do that, right? Like you're not trying, excuse me, you're not trying to, you know, I don't know do something that's like wildly different. You're just kind of being yourself, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Uh, have, have you had any sort of feedback from, from other artists like that? Or have you seen it, you know, in other people doing that kind of thing? Or do you think you're pretty much like... I don't, well, from my own personal experiences... In the community no. here, or, or perhaps in, you know, in your realm of awareness, like people you follow or whatever, like, is that also I mean, something that you see? Of course, like I've... Obviously, my inspirations from what I've seen online, you know, I've seen people who do makeup like that and they go out. And a lot, um, part of the thing that I also kind of, and I have to very much credit that is, you know, my my respect and my love for, you know, people who do drag and within the drag community. That's also some of my inspirations behind that. Um, you know, because even though it is different from what I'm trying to do, um, people who participate in drag and they put drag shows they're also kind of in a way performing with an identity that you know suits them and that they can be um, comfortable in and perform for other people and again other than that I haven't really seen it that much um, from just my own because I'm assuming other people do it you know where they kind mm -hmm. of include themselves too in the work as it's uh, exhibited and as mm -hmm. it relates to them but from my understanding no not really for sure. Yeah, I feel remiss not to think of drag as well, because I mean, that's also like, as far as the valley goes, though, there's a lot of history behind that, too, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, because to, to my understanding, you know, uh, there's folks who like they're like, uh, they're makeup artists, or perhaps like their their art form is like working with makeup and faces mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But uh, w uh, using it, I guess, in the way that you have as a sort of like alter ego, 
or superego, perhaps, if we're using philosophy, right? Uh, you know, uh, in connection to like your other practices, or perhaps your more yes. primary, uh, 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 I don't know what the word would be, like physical artwork practices. Yeah, I think it's really like cool. plastic really arts cool. in general. Right, 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 right. Uh, real quick, if anybody in the chat has a question, go ahead and drop it in. We'll toss it in as this uh, chat starts wrapping down in a little while. Um, so uh, we've kind of burned through a bunch of the questions that I have so far. I don't remember if I asked you about the water lilies, but I am curious. Have I asked yes. you about that? I did. Yeah, at the beginning. It was about the reference to some of my artwork. Well, okay, that's right. the actual, I mean, if I can explain the symbol behind it, yeah. The Please. reason why I, I even included it in my work to begin with uh, was because I I was interested more in the in the lily pad more than the actual water lily. When I first featured it in some of my work, I even though I hadn't really and I still to this day I feel like such a poser because I haven't read Hamlet. I really do. But you know, I was really inspired by the character of Ophelia uh -huh. and in some of the I think I'm not too sure, I forgot the the artist. But there's an artwork of Ophelia, I forgot the artist, I'm sorry, but where she's surrounded by like this river and there's water lilies and even the artist within the model, I remember the model got ill from posing with him or posing for him in the bathtub. I, rem I remember all of that, but I can't remember the artist. Oh my God. But, um, Is it a painting anyway. or a photo? Yes. I forgot. I'm Googling it. <laughs> I want to see what it's, you're talking about. Uh, there's um, different ones. Yes, uh, but this one was Ophelia. I forgot. She's, she's sleeping. Or is she kind of yes, on the she's back? like in uh huh. But like long ways or like front. Yes, ways? the the artwork has like a curvature to the top. Curvature. It's like a very famous painting, uh, but I forgot the artist's name. Is she kind of like, like that? Yes. Uh huh. Uh, I think I. Uh, Lon Quixote. That's the name of the artist here. No, the oh, wait, 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 um, I'm going to move the phone, everybody. Yes, uh, so we can show us the one. Hold it for the rest of the, is this the one you're talking about? <laughs> no, not that one. Uh, there's other ones here. Let's, let me know. If Why don't you put art. that one, that one is, it's like talk, a talk, little, talk. this one? That one is like a, a, a little snippet of it. That's oh, a snippet part of, of it. Oh, whole thing? It's, uh -huh, that's a part of a full on painting. Okay. But this is the one that you... Uh, you yeah, that one's... Uh -huh. okay. okay, so from that artwork, again, remember that I was saying that I was inspired by the artists that Gucci would feature in their work. I remember Ignacy Monreal, he's an artist who does digital work. He did a recreation of that that actually oh. featured water lilies around it. And I remember I started uh, researching about her and um, her role in terms of the, the story. And then I kind of reclaimed it again like I do. And I was thinking about the water lily kind of being in like an essence, like this little platform in the water, right? That, you know, it's kind of like a little safe bed for you not to drown. Mm -hmm. And like thinking just like about size, right? It's pretty small. But then I was thinking about the water lily too, about how it's both that. It's like a little trampoline or a little safe bed for you not to drown, uh -huh. metaphorical, not drowning within your own emotions, right? But also the water lily itself from coming from this kind of... Um, the uh what is it that i'm looking for this kind of muddy waters where you know it's very cliche but the muddy waters that kind of happen to us sometimes that uh our mental health kind of pays for it and such but you know that there's always a promise of rebirth um within that too that the water really is a very special plant too in terms that I, i'm actually <laughs> i'm actually growing them in my garden i, I saw it on your instagram yes uh from my experience i don't know maybe i'm not taking care of the currently, but I mean they bloomed, so I have, I'm probably They're looking doing healthy from what I've seen. I, when I got it first, uh, they were like tiny, super little water lilies, and they rarely need any help. Like uh, the only thing that I do sometimes, I change the water. I sometimes take out some of the, like the ones that have died and stuff, and I'm yeah. just kind of constantly taking care of it. But I don't. It's not like a plant that you have to kind of constantly water because I mean it's in water, so it's yeah. not necessarily so. It's very easy to take care of a water lily. And the, the nice thing about the, the plant itself is that it's, you know, it's a symbol throughout uh, art history. There's a lot of references of rebirth. You know, the, it's, it's very much connected also to that beetle that I always feature, that I, I basically have also with my identity in terms of like how I felt about myself, kind of reclaiming it with the Kafka 
uh, metaphor there. Sure. Yeah, with just kind of explaining for those that uh, might not know, uh, yeah, yeah. With the metamorphosis. It's a you know it's a novel that talks about the life of this individual, this guy who kind of wakes up uh, one day. Gregor Samsa, right? Huh? Gregor Samsa, right? That's his name. Yes. Uh huh. Gregor. <laughs> he wakes up as a roach, or like a beetle, <laughs> and uh, you know it, it talks about the struggles of of being a, an insect, right? But it's very much a metaphor about. Um, you know, daily life and daily struggle and kind of seeing how his family didn't really value him and just society just kind of sees you as this kind of recyclable thing. And then we've seen it. Almost. Uh -huh, there you go. Right. And um, the way that I related the Beatle too was, you know, this kind of tragic eternal punishment of having to exist. Very tragic too, because, you know, I can relate to a lot of things. To but the... <laughs> But the uh, the water lily is also, I mean, I'm sorry, the water lily, as it relates to the beetle, in, you know, in Egyptian, uh, ancient culture, it also has to relate back to rebirth. And seeing that Kepri, one of the, the gods, was a little beetle, you know, he was kind of the one that had to, like, push the sun every single day, kind of like the dung beetle, which is the one that I, that I use, you know, push every single day to kind of make the sun come out. And it's also a sign of rebirth. So I'm just kind of like pulling things from here and from there and kind of making it my own and just kind of weaving it together with sure. all these little references from from art history, definitely. Or art histories. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of like Dali and his aunts. True. Yes. Yeah, are you familiar with that? Yeah. I imagine. Yeah, of course. Uh, when I when I learned about that, I all of a sudden like couldn't like not see them in like a lot of his pieces after yeah. a while. I was like, oh, fucking like right here too. What the, you know. But I, I, it was, I think that's from when, like, uh, there's, like, a war happening or something, right? And he, that's kind of, like, where all of his, like, evil in the world or something. I forget what the what the ants mean exactly. Do you remember by chance? I don't, I haven't heard about that. I know that his work had a lot of sexual undertones towards That too, 100%. Um, and I remember the ants kind of being part of that, you know, like, masochist kind of, like, pain and pleasure. I, I remember reading about that. I'm not too sure. I know that... Of course, most of these artists were within the the Second World War, so that has a lot to do with it too. But sure. I remember that there was a lot of that. Uh, I, that's what I remember from the ants. I don't know if they were. I, I forget where I where I read it, but I think it had something to do. I, I thought it was like his uh, some some long explanation. I'm terrible about like remembering like what things have said, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, Dali, he's fantastic. But um, <laughs> have you ever seen any of his works, by the way? in person no. yeah that's something i would like to do eventually to be able to travel and look at those uh, artworks in person because I, I i remember growing up i would always see them and i imagine that there are some size but they're actually smaller and that one yes. is uh, the real famous one the persistence of memory uh -huh. i always tell everyone that i have like like a uh, when I remember that artwork, I don't have a good memory of it because the first time I ever saw it, you would think that I would see it in an art class, but I saw it in the nurse's office and I was in pain because something had happened to my foot that like I was in gym class, something happened, I sprained my foot and like the nurse was just hesitant to like give me a pinch and she was like, wait, hold on, like I'm busy with something else. And I remember in the waiting that, room. And I was like in the waiting room obviously. looking at the persistence of memory <laughs> and thinking of the pain and I would look at it and it I hated the painting because it was so strange oh to me. I was like, God. why is it like that? Like, why is there, because there's, you know, there's like this kind of portrait of himself kind of in the bottom. I used yeah. to think that was like a, like a duck or something. I was like, no. So I kind of Wait. rejected surrealism at first. Noted. I, I completely, I do not blame you, especially given the circumstances. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, was that was it a small piece or was it a big poster of it? No, the one that she has was a big poster. I know that the original was smaller. I saw it. I saw it at the MoMA a couple of years ago. It's about this. Yeah. It's fucking tiny. You have to like go up and look at it. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, one thing I do want to kind of touch on, it'll probably be one of our last uh, questions, <laughs> is um, first of all, thank you so much for yes. doing this and for being down to talk to us. Really appreciate it. Or talk to me, I guess. Um, and thank you so much to everybody who's tuned in so far. Reminder, if you want to ask Alejandro a question, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Anything goes, um, provided that it's, you know, not a weird question or whatever. Um, but also, uh, just kind of uh, talking about Dali reminded me of just how, you know, artists usually create stuff. Um, uh, if they're not trying to talk about other stuff, they're talking about themselves and what they're going through. And, you know, mentioned that quite a bit. 
uh, as that being uh, an inspiration for a lot of your work, how you kind of like, uh, how you've made your decisions to kind of like pursue different things and, and kind of like represent your feelings in, in artwork in very different ways. Um, is there any way in particular that the pandemic has had an impact on that? Most definitely. Um, I think like towards the beginning, it helped me a lot um, in comparison to other people that I felt that it uh, slowed them down. Uh, when I was having a lot of trouble uh, mentally, I guess you could say, and I was having many thoughts was before the pandemic happened, when I was kind of creating some of the body of work. And I just, it was very hard for me to make artwork in person, like with everyone. And when the pandemic happened, and I was just secluded to myself and just my home and the studio that I have, and I'm just, like, I feel like everything kind of slowed down and I was able to begin with all of those illustrations that I now have. I guess in a way, it just, it was like a reset button for me. It was like, okay, I can kind of start again. And in, in a way it helped me to kind of realize what direction I wanted to take my work, which is now what I currently do. Um, it definitely did help me, but you know, that was again, also very short lived about maybe July, because then, you know, as things kind of got progressively more, um, I guess, serious, I started kind of, since I was still taking art classes online, I started kind of longing to be in the studio with everyone again. So I was like, okay, like I feel better now. I was like, where's everyone? <laughs> you know, I, Hurry up and and I pandemic. Yeah, I yeah, know. And it was, it was hard for me to kind of create artwork because sometimes I depended on other of my peers or my friends for, for, um, for advice or just being, you know, it, it's so nice being in a space where everybody just kind of, you know, helps you out and just, kind of collaborates in, in discussion about your work and such. It's it's very nice. So whenever you don't have that, you're kind of on your own to, to kind of deal with some of the errors that you might make or mistakes. Uh, sure. But it's all a learning process. But I think ultimately it helped me because another thing is towards the summer is when I started meeting Ramiro, which I am eternally grateful also. Like, I can't believe that, you know, Shout I was to able to... I had to connect with everyone and, and him first, uh, you know, when he did that interview with me and such. So in a way, I feel like because I'm not in person so much and I'm more involved online, I was able to reach more people that I could have ever reached in person. So I, in a way, even though it has been very uh, hard for a lot of people, you know, economically, of course, health wise, if I'm talking strictly about my work and, and its awareness within the community, it helped me. That's awesome. I'm really glad. Um, because you're, you're where you're at now producing yes, artwork. Yes, exactly. And a big part of the festival, which we have happening on Saturday. Segue into talking about like what's going to be going on this weekend. If you're in the chat, stick around for the festival uh, on Saturday. Uh, we're going to be starting it around like 6 p.m. It's going to be about a couple hours worth of films, uh, collaborations, bumpers. And the whole time, we're going to have a virtual installation featuring works like Alejandra's here, uh, along with several other great artists from the Valley. All Valley talent, Valley work, all mind blowing. Please go check it out. The website is Mira with three A's, Mira MediaFest.net. Um, and on that, I'll pivot over to you, Alejandro. Do you have anything that you'd like to plug anywhere that you want people to see your work? Obviously, your Instagram. I mean, that's pretty much it. Right now, I'm strictly just on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to kind of uh, start selling now, vending. Uh, if you can go to my Instagram, uh, if any of the things that I have there, then, <laughs> yeah, you can drop it in the chat or um, yes. then you can check them out. I've been, that's also another thing that I've been trying to get more into because be, in the beginnings of my work, I would just strictly make work, but I wouldn't sell anything. People would ask me, you know, do you sell this and this? I'm like, I don't know, I'm still working out. But right now I'm kind of venturing into that world, vending and, and selling. So, you know, if any of my work interests you, because I know some of my big, bigger work is sometimes little bit more expensive because of the time that goes into it but i have you know work that i and i strictly made to be more accessible because i want people to be able to you know cherish my work and, and give a lovely home to it so oh. any of that interests you you know i'm still going to be creating different artworks in the future that's kind of the route that i'm taking so yes you can check it out my work in instagram fantastic uh let me drop it in the chat real quick so folks can can check it out just in case Is there is it uh, 44 underscore water lilies? No, no, it, 44 water lilies. They got no like together. Okay. Right. There we go. Just dropped it. Go ahead and follow Alejandra. Like all of her posts. 
and look <laughs> for her uh, water lilies, her water lily garden. Are, are those hard to grow in the valley? Because we have a very specific kind of climate, and it's getting hotter now. So, like, is it is it, it pretty easy? It's real easy because the ones that I've had, they've survived. They survived the winter storm. They whoa yes, in somebody, the water. Mm-hmm. They survived the winter storm. So basically, <laughs> it's so strange. There's like a little, what is it? Like a, just a, like a sheet of ice at the top. And I was like, I'm going to die. But no, they they just kind of, again, they got reborn. There's new now. So it's like nothing happened. That's and incredible. several, like some of the things that I like to do, I don't do it so much now, but some of like my hobbies was that I like going to the birding centers. And in most birding centers, they have some sort of pond and they're always there, the water lilies. So they're easy to grow here in the valley there. They, they, they're good in the climate. Are you eventually going to have like a whole pond full of them? Is that your plan? It's very Monet. That's very uh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first thing that I thought of anyway when, when I saw like water lilies and you're using it. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Well, Alejandra, it has been a pleasure to speak with you this evening. Thank you so much for making time. Thank I feel you. like this hour blew by super fast. I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, thank you so much. Everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. Let yes. me just double check if we have any questions or anything else, any other comments. Mm -hmm. Any little questions? Yes, go. <laughs> go grow them. They're easy. They sell them. Okay, look, I'm going to tell y'all where I got it. I got go it at Lowe's. It. There's like little cups, and it has like a little plastic water lily. Just grab one of those. Get yourself like a little tin something container. Put them outside. Put water in them. Put a little soil. Yeah, good to go. You're gonna have little water lilies. I love that we have a whole like plant, like like garden <laughs> in our interview. It's fantastic. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you, everyone. Gonna We're gonna wrap this up. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. See you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Bye.